All right, y'all. I know that it's been a minute, maybe not. I don't really think it has since the last upload. This is gonna be a much, much longer video as you guys can already tell because I have a lot of stuff to cover in this one. A while back, I made a video called Sonic, the, which I implied to be the video game version of Sonic and they put him against Goku. But um, honestly, I gotta be real. I don't like that video at all, not even a little bit. Um, and this might just be creator motif, but um, I just feel like I didn't do a good job of really explaining why Sonic wins or even really going over anything Sonic could really do in that. So I'm gonna redo that whole thing pretty much and just do it again. And we're just gonna cover it for real. I feel like back then when I made videos, I didn't do them as correct. So you might just see a lot of redos of those old videos because I just don't feel like that they were done the right way. So guys, if you guys do enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, so share, subscribe to the notification for be informed about new videos whenever you upload them. And thank you. Um, but I do want to say this right now, though, this may or may not be the same outcome as it was before. But uh, as you guys can probably tell, I'm going to be doing video games Sonic versus Sun Goku. Uh, which apparently a lot of people think that Goku wins this and that's because it's video game Sonic Which yeah, I'm here to tell you. Yeah, you're, you might be wrong may not be wrong. Who knows? Let's just watch. Let's just get into this right now Okay, so one big difference I'm doing in this video compared to like the previous one I made which um, You know, I don't want to really cover too much because like I said, I didn't really like that So yeah, I'm gonna do this for all the new not just for the new people but just I start over in general because I just didn't like it. Um, we're going to do this like I do all my versus battles, which is that I do two different segments. Uh, well, three different segments. The first segment being where I cover the first character. The second segment being where I cover the second character. And my third segment being where we decide who actually wins and covers them battling each other in like, you know, a, you know, a format of sorts. Okay, so because I know for a fact that Sonic is going to be longer and that I've already wasted at least two minutes doing this, I think it'd be pretty good if I, like, got into the actual concept of the video. So, yeah, let's get into Sonic's portion right now. Sonic the Hedgehog is Sega's mascot and the infamous protagonist of Sonic the Hedgehog series born on Christmas um, Island. Eggman Robotnik, who had been kidnapped, his friends and converting them into robotic slaves as part of a plot to collect the fable Chaos Emeralds and use their powers to conquer the world. Sonic decides up to him to save them and embarks on a quest to free his friends and thwart the evil schemes of Robotnik. Since then, Sonic has made it his mission to stop the schemes of Dr. Eggman whenever he can and has successfully done so for decades now, becoming a famed hero worldwide. Gifted with the ability to run at the speed of sound and beyond, Sonic's trademark ability is his super speed. As his species implies, Sonic can also roll up into a concussive ball primarily to attack enemies. Now, 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 I know you guys are thinking, what was the brief of Sonic? Do we even need that? You probably don't need that. But either way, I just want to do it for all people that don't know who Sonic is and who are just clicking on the video because they're like, oh, Goku, and not Sonic, and they don't know anything about Sonic. Or they were clicking on like, oh, Sonic, and then they're like, who is Goku? And then I just learned about him throughout the video. So, yeah, I just want to make that very clear. Now, when covering, like, Sonic, he has a lot of powers and abilities, so I've only, like, covered the things that, like, actually, like, matter, right? So, like, for example, he has regeneration at least high to mid, Normally, superior to his classic self who can quickly recover from his entire body being crushed. Low godly VIA soul reconstruction as he can pers persist after death by deriving energy from his soul. Um, energy absorption can absorb chaos energy and hyper go on energy. Um, he can also um, has invulnerability with invincibility monitors with time stop now some of these are like a little out of pocket because like sonic wouldn't actually have some of this stuff on him so i just want you to keep that in mind um you know uh so a lot of his powers and abilities that i can even talk about like the bubble shield fire shield lightning shield aren't really necessary mainly because like he would never actually have those things like you know what i mean like on him at the time so it just doesn't really apply um no i guess though for example, like sealing with magic hands, but yeah, he wouldn't have like the magic hands. Flight, by himself via certain techniques and with extreme gear. Also with green hover, indigo, asteroid, violet void, orange rocket, crimson eagle, and magnet rhythm. So yeah, once again, bunch and bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? 
uh, soul manipulation can occasionally one back control from uh, Rift during the final skirmish in Sonic Rivals 2 whose abilities work by binding the soul. Uh, spatial manipulation can endure shadow spatial distorting attacks if they were conventional blows and whatnot. And overall, all the Super Sonic's abilities on a greatly enhanced scale, which is that that's death manipulation, uh, and can use the Hyper Flash to emit a blinding flash of light that destroys all enemies in range. And and yeah, okay. So for Sonic's uh, like powers and abilities, uh, I'm not gonna cover them really in depth because overall when it comes down to like sonic and goku what really matters is like raw power and like raw speed and like raw strength and all that that's actually all that really matters for this battle if i'm being honest i could i could go down like a list of sonic's like many different abilities and whatnot but here's the thing none of them should ever be allowed in a real versus battle here's why you can go on for days about how sonic has like this and that but here's a reality check Sonic would never actually have any of these things on him. He's not like Mario and has like a literal thing where he holds his items at. He's not like that. Sonic doesn't do that. He just finds most of his items laying around. And all the other items that you can make an argument for are normally only in the game and only ever shown in a game where he used them one time. So unless Sonic has it like the spin dash or drop dash or all his different spin dash techniques, I'm not going to be giving Sonic any of those things But outside of like literal feats and whatnot. But yeah, okay, so let's let's get into Sonic's like attack potency, which actually really matters for this battle, and so on and so forth. So we're looking at, at Sonic's attack potency, we can start this off at low multiversal level. I know for a lot of y'all that might sound really crazy to start him off at low multiversal level in terms of the scaling, but let's just see why. He contended against a Razor Din who are harvested 100 out of the 1,100 Arabian Nights, with each night being a universe independent on itself and higher with color powers and we can say he was at least low multiversal level because he was much stronger than before when he defeated the dark queen who one shot at his base form with immense ease then we can come back again to say that yes no he's higher than that now and at multiverse level because he defeated al Laa, who destroyed the world of the arabian nights by merely existing where the arabian nights contain 1001 stories which are the 1001 nights with each story being a universe in its own containing infinite dreams of the characters that are in it he recreated the entire arabian nights with a mere hand move likely out of versal level and here's why let's just listen why i know this is getting a little crazy but let's just see why Avla stated that he was going to reshape Sonic's world after being done with the Arabian Nights. We can assume that he is also out of verse level for sure now because he was empowered by the Chaos Terms, which allowed him, Shadow and Silver, to defeat Solaris, who was described to be a super dimensional being where the Sonic verse contains um, Magner World, which is a world that contains infinite dreams, dimensions, and possibilities, but for, with Solaris transcending all of them. Solaris being a super dimensional being means that he is transcendent above the higher dimensions, at least out of universal level, empowered by the super emeralds, which are superior to the chaos emeralds. So I want you guys to just take all that in real quick. At Sonic's most highest peak is out of universal level. And I literally just gave you like three different lines for why that is consistent so you guys can't say well sonic is inconsistent no sonic should not have that much no no I, I literally explained why he's that strong and i literally gave you the reasons you can go look at it for yourself and i'm literally probably showing it right now and you can pretty much get a pretty good idea of how strong sonic is and all that good stuff now with that being said and we're out of that we can talk about what makes sonic really know not just his attack potency but his speed sonic is most known for his speed now talking about sonic speed it won't take that long so we'll just start out when sonic first started his journey we can easily say that he was massively ftl plus to start off which should be no surprise as he's literally stated to at the beginning being stated to be like around sound speed or whatever often credited as the fast thing in his world and even his universe stated to be faster than light by multiple official sources considers the speed of light small time often reacts to evades and out uh paces laser beams with little effort has outpaced the gravitational pull of black holes on several occasions 
consistently outpaced and blitzed the egg mobile which quickly traveled from earth to the non-aggression zone in order to confront ultimate germa germal uh can react perfectly fine and efficiently maneuver after grabbing um the bonus item in sonic runners um adventure which enables him to fly interstellar distances which has been calculated at numerous times the speed of life was able to transverse uh night palace is likely faster than luma uh, flow light um and his top speed in his base is pretty much unknown for uh for that but massively fdl nonetheless um and now we get to sonic being even faster because clearly sonic does not cap out at mfdl plus and infinite speed could function perfectly fine and maintain movement after the complete destruction of the arabian nights reality where time was completely erased likely irrelevant because he can function perfectly and maintain movement in timeless voids fought with and could blitz solaris once again a super dimensional life form fought the phantom king and klepto mobile where the concept of time is non-linear so at the strongest sonic is he has irrelevant speed which if you guys didn't know this that means you are literally so fast and you are breaking the like edges off reality sonic is so fast that he is the fastest tier in tiering like you cannot tier him any higher in fiction he is by far the fastest character or one of the fastest characters in fiction because he literally is at the highest tier you can humanly be at which is irrelevant speed there is nothing higher than irrelevant speed so sonic is by far one of the fastest characters in fiction and based off the tiering system i'm not making this up irrelevant speed is the highest speed you can humanly have that is sonic's speed in fiction so i want you guys to just keep that in mind this is video game sonic by the way video game sonic not archie sonic from the Archie comics, this is a video game Sonic. And I think this should go without saying that video game Sonic is going to be pretty tough for Goku to beat. But nonetheless, now that we've covered all that stuff for Sonic, which I know that took a very long time, we can now get into the Goku section and then we can proceed um, on after that. All right, y'all, now for the Goku portion. Son Goku born by his Saiyan name Kakarot, his main protagonist of the series Dragon Ball along Vegeta. He is one of the last pure-blooded Saiyans. Um, and yeah, Goku was originally sent via a, a space pod to enslave and conquer the planet Earth, but when he arrived, he was picked up by an old man named Gohan who took care of the boy. One day, Goku sustained a head injury that made him forget about his goal of destroying the Earth. After this, he became a kind boy who would travel the world and even protect against powerful enemies. Goku's was inspired by the monkey Sun Wukong, for all y'all who don't know nothing about Sun Goku, one of my favorite characters out there. Now this is not a swing of bias poll. I think this is a good time to say in the video that I am not biased and that I'm not biased. So yeah, I love Sonic and Goku equally, so this is just as fair as anything else. Now I want to say this as well, Goku's portion will not be nearly as long as because most of Goku's powers come from Ki, which is life energy if you guys didn't know that, and thus allowing him to shoot giant energy blasts, attacks from his hands, fly, and do all that type of cool stuff. So yeah, I don't really have that much to talk about for Goku outside of him being a master martial artist, but he was trained by Grandpa Gohan, then later trained by Master Roshi, who he surpassed, and Goku fought Tien, who was equally as skilled as him and was catching him up guard time to time and so on and so forth. He also would then go on to fight Vegeta, Frieza, Cell, and Majin Buu, all stronger than the last and was able to conquer them until he eventually fought Beerus, a god of destruction. And yeah, Beerus is like probably the peak of like the toughest, one of the toughest opponents he's fought. He's obviously not the toughest. Goku has things like the solar flare, the spirit bomb, telepathy, water walking, telekinesis, he can use instant transmission if he can pick up on a key signature. He has a stroke of this. I didn't already say, I might already said the stroke of this. Maybe I probably already said that and I just repeated it. Now I sound stupid. And, you know, obviously Goku has his most infamous thing ever, Super Saiyan, which allows him to increase his power as he continues to keep transforming. Goku, um, you know, he has the ability to turn to a grade eight, but his tail is cut off so he doesn't have that power anymore. But yeah, that's just something. Um, he, uh, in the tournament of power, he resisted the effects of the pretty black hole, a gigantic mass of gravity. Um, so yeah, he did that. 
and he even has Ultra Instinct. He can he has instinctive reaction. Ultra Instinct allows Goku to react and perform without the need of thought and um, nullify Jiren's Ki Blast with his heat. A uh, greater reactive power level and adaption. Goku's senses were sharper and he was adapting to the battle against Jiren far greater than he could normally, becoming more sharper, quicker, and stronger as the fight was going on. So yeah, that's how Ultra Instinct works. Um, and now, with that being said, we pretty much covered everything you need to know about Goku and so on and so forth. Uh, stuff like its transmission and stuff like that won't really even be that useful because Goku literally will not have a key signature unless you want to follow the plays that, you know, Sonic has a key, a key signature because all living things do. And if we did like, you know, uh, we'll get into that in that portion. Anyways, we're going to talk about Goku's attack potency, which is more of what's important. Once again, like I said earlier about this battle, not so the skills and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll just get into this right now. Looking at Goku's most earliest attack potency, as far as Z and on is concerned, we get Goku at, at least low multiversal level. Why? Because in his fight against Beerus, Goku was starting to destroy the entire Universe 7 macrocosm, which consists of multiple universal sized realms, separated by space-time, including the living universe, other world including heaven, hell, and the Kaioshin realm, a dimension separate from the rest of the universe. Goku absorbed the Super Saiyan God power into his regular Super Saiyan form, and then later in base destroyed an energy ball that his Super Saiyan form couldn't. So yeah, that's Goku's low multiversal level scaling. I think that's pretty consistent. I think most scalers will agree on that. Now we have Goku's high multiversal level plus scaling. In the Daizenshu 4, the other world that Goku and Beerus were going to destroy is stated to transcend dimensions that cannot be perceived by the mortal world. With the raw strength of Beerus and other destroyers in the Daizenshu 4 also being stated to transcend dimensions. And um, we can then say he's at least low multiverse level once more because he got significantly stronger after training with Weeks. Uh, then we can move that on to multiversal level because with transformations, even with Super Saiyan 3, he'd be 400 times stronger than before. Super Saiyan Blue is a Super Saiyan God who has become a Super Saiyan and a greater multiplier all his previous forms. And this probably makes him likely high multiversal level plus. And then we can go back down to making him at least multiversal level by saying during the Universe 6 vs. Universe 7 tournament, he could fight Hit in his base form, who completely overpowered Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta with very casual strikes and overpowered his time skip. And then we can say this means he's likely multiversal level plus higher with transformations. Goku stacked Kaioken times 10 on top of other Super Saiyan Blue, making him at least thousands of times stronger than before. And then we can go back and say he's likely high multiversal level plus because during the Goku Black Art, Goku got numerous Zenkai's after losing to Goku Black many times, far surpassing his previous arc self, high wave transformations. Near the end of the arc, his Super Saiyan Blue form could kick down merge some monster who is many times more powerful than the Goku Black he fought earlier. Later implied, if he was healed up, he could have at least done something to infinite Samasu, even after learning he merged with the timeline. Before the tournament of power, he could destroy Hit's parallel world. And then we have high multiverse level plus, more scaling for it. At the start of the tournament, Goku struggled to even land a strike on Jiren, even while stacking the Kaioken on top of Super Saiyan Blue, who is stated to be the mightiest foe of Dragon Ball history. As the tournament went on, he got stronger and could fight Jiren better than he could before, making Jiren use even more power. Even while exhausted and heavily injured, he helped Frieza in 17 fight against Jiren. As a Super Saiyan alongside Frieza, he managed to defeat Jiren, which was just knocking him out, so that doesn't necessarily mean he quite quote unquote defeat him in a one on one scenario. I just want to keep that in mind. Then we can go back to high multiverse level plus scaling once more and say his Ultra Instinct Omen form harmed Jiren before it ran out the first time. Later in Master Ultra Instinct, he was significantly harming Jiren and overpowered him at the end and would have beaten him if the form didn't run out. At least multiverse level and we can still say likely high multiverse level plus higher with transformations. Could keep up with regular Broly and enraged Broly, somewhat fall Super Saiyan Broly, but was overwhelmed. And that's it for Goku's attack potency section. Um, that's what you need to know about, you know, his AP and whatnot. Now, I do know that that seemed like it took a long time just to cover all of that, but we're not done with Goku yet. We have to cover his speed, which is a very important part of this battle. But um, yeah, it's Sonic versus Goku. So, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll just find out. At least massively FTL plus, along with his power increase, Goku was far faster than before. Likely infinite speed though, because Dragon Ball characters are shown to react to key explosions at the moment they occur and Goku scales to Beerus to react to and nullify the massive key ball that would have engulfed the infinite size universe in moments. Beerus somewhat scales to Whis who can cross to Zeno's uh, heavenly realm in two days which is a separate space from the 12 universes. So it is infinitely far away. 
Now, we can say he has likely infinite scaling again because Goku became far faster than before after training with Whis. And yeah, that's pretty much it um, for Goku's speed. Yeah. Okay, so let's just, let's, you know, let's just, let's just, uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that's the end of Goku's portion uh, because we covered his speed, type potency, and all his, you know, powers and whatnot. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and end the Goku portion and then we can get into the next portion, which will be the last okay, portion. Okay, guys, this is future the actual me, uh, not the discussion. Really, so let's um, get into that it'll right now. future me for y'all because, well, you're watching a video. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go back and just make this section seem a lot better than I initially intended it to be. Um, I didn't like the initial section I did for this, so I'm just going to cover it really quick. Um, you guys are going to hear the original audio. We're talking about the speed of Sonic and Goku when comparing them. But I just want to talk about the, like, the AP real quick that we, like, you know, discussed between them. Because I just didn't like the way I did that section at all. And I just wanted to shorten it as well. Okay, so Sonic had out of verse level, like, attack potency, which made him, like, five tiers stronger than Goku in terms of using the tiering system from versus about a wiki, which is what everybody else uses. Uh, Goku was high multiverse level, which is nowhere near close to Sonic. Later, I then said that Super Sonic, uh, if, Goku, if Sonic were to use the Chaos Symbols, uh, he would not only be invincible, but he would also still be at out of verse levels and literally has an attack that literally allows him to destroy everything on screen. That is just the ridiculous power of like video games. So I'm not even gonna use that for scale, but I just want you guys to keep in mind that he's five tiers higher and one tier away from being balanced, which is literally the highest that any character can humanly be in fiction. Okay, so yeah, Sonic just had way more like power and whatnot than Goku, and that's ultimately all you need to know um, about that part. Um, I just cut out half of that, and now I'm gonna let you guys listen to like the initial stuff I said about the speed, and I think this will sway you anyways into believing me. Um, I'm not biased or anything, but yeah, I just wanted to make this part a lot faster because the video was long enough as it was. Um, yeah, enjoy uh, past me. All right, guys. But he's not like the strongest tier ever, which is like boundless, which is like, you know, the serious tier. Characters are obviously gonna affect structures will completely exceed the logic of foundations. That's what boundless is, which is tier zero, which is the most unstoppable characters in fiction. That is literally the peak character. Sonic is literally one tier away from that level, by the way. <laughs> so I want you guys to keep that in mind uh, about Sonic really quick, because yeah, that's that's where he is. In there. So yeah, you gotta keep that in mind. But if you guys remember earlier, we discussed something that I think was very important to this battle, right? You know? And we know what it is, you know? It was the speed. Now, if we remember correctly, Sonic's speed was how much again? Oh yeah, it was like that crazy speed. It was like irrelevant speed, right? Which we know Sonic for his speed, right? And you know, speed, speed normally equals power. So yeah, what's irrelevant speed? Well, irrelevant speed is the fastest that a character can humanly be in fiction. While with Goku, he was just hitting infinite speed, which would mean that Goku is millions to zillions, like <laughs> gallons of time slower than Sonic is. He's not even in the range of Sonic. He's nowhere near him. And that's what like, not highballing, but just uh, taking in a lot of different calculations to get him that high. He doesn't even have a measurable speed, which would be a lot better. But even then, Sonic is on like this ridiculous tier of irrelevant speed. There is literally no way that you can even quantify his speed. It's beyond all conception. And yet, Goku is still an infinite speed level. Goku is still an infinite speed speed level he is nowhere near sonic so with that being said i honestly don't even think there's a point in doing a scenario there's no difference there's just nothing goku can do and i know like y'all like y'all goku fans don't kill me in the comments don't kill me in the comments if you guys have any questions just ask me and i'll be happy to tell you like the foundation, even though I went over everything already and explained why go like how these characters are even this strong or fast. And with that being said, guys, I'm gonna go up and get up out of here because this video is already long enough. I just wanted you guys to understand 
that Sonic just wins. Son Sonic just wins. Goku cannot be video game Sonic. Arguably, he has a easier chance beating Archie Sonic, which I might just do for like the sake of it again, because why not? But I actually kind of like that one, so I may not even redo that one. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. And I can never say this enough. I'll never be able to say this enough. Thank you. And uh, yeah, Sonic wins. Don't kill me, Goku fans. Please. All right, guys. Have a nice day.